Murphy is in Steinberg. You know what the fuck it is? Aries and Andy, you and a jerk. You know it's time to get this work. The real raw, gutter, uncut cocaine. No political corrections. Always sleep. Fuck being a woke. We discuss politics and jokes. Cry, we lick. There's levels to this shit. Before you were sucking on your mama's tit. Airy Spears don't give a fuck. We talk about race a lot. Racism. Sexism. Much love to my loyal bitch bag holders. Rollers, clip loaders. We got them in the folders. The whole world on our shoulders. Spears and Steinberg. Yeah. Yo, first off, let me read from my man Ty Pope, whose email I lost. Uh, last time we did this, and Andy said to send it back in. And, and he, he did? did? Yes. All right. So, Ty, you've been listening, baby. Uh, my fucking coonskin. What's up, fellas? I'm still listening. Haven't written in for a while. I apologize uh, in advance if this email gets a little long, but I thought I was the only person uh, in world. Uh, I've got to say the. $10, a lot of money. Who saw this movie? I might have seen it for the first time in 87, 88 than maybe uh, seven years old, and I was hooked. It was one of them ones for me. Watch it, rewind it, and watch it again. And what's crazy is my parents knew I was watching it and never said a word about it, <clears throat> um, but would cuss me all the way out when they heard my NWA playing. I promise if you would have seen, the mo seen that movie at a young age, you wouldn't think it was trippy at all. I'm 42 now, and literally no one I've ever met has seen this movie before they met me. It just brought back some dope memories when I heard y'all talking about it. But Aries, one more thing. Get a hold on that squeamishness and get some football and more combat sports in your system. I'll make a deal with you. If you get the right words in your emails, uh, I will get some more sports and shit in me. Um, <clears throat> just shooting the shit with you. Don't start calling me a cocksucker and kind of shit. Thanks for not stepping on the coca, guys. Peace. Incidentally, I forgot. Uh, when we did um, yesterday's episode where we were talking about Whitney. Yeah. And we also talked about Dragged Across the Country. Yeah. Do you know what we didn't talk about? Sports and comedy. Brendan from the fucking UK. <laughs> I can't believe he's cork, sucker. All right. Um, you know, we, we can go back and edit some in there. No, let's not do that to him. He might overdose on some crumpets and tea. Um, dude, it, it, you so what I would think that movie okay, as a little kid though, because it's a cartoon and it really invites and it shows you in nudity and a little bit of nudity. Yeah, and, and the guys are cool. Like, I mean, the, the cartoon characters are kind of like you know, right? I don't know. I, I no, yeah. you might be right because. Like I said, I know I saw Fritz the Cat. Yeah. It just was so long ago, I don't remember it. So I would imagine, yeah, to a kid, anything's uh, risque. Yeah. Cursing, nudity, violence would be awesome to a child. Yeah, and you know, I, I don't I don't know if it's good or bad, but there's no actual death in uh, like cartoons. I mean, you watch Coyote fall down the... right. So cartoons are, even though the, they can have violence or whatever in them, they're peaceful. Coyote gets abused a lot. Yeah, but he doesn't get killed. Right. What color is the coyote? Brown. What color is the roadrunner? I don't know, but he's brown. Coyote <laughs> black. And he takes abuse. All right. We need to make that connection. <laughs> You can, find, you can find anything that you want to find if you put enough effort into it. Uh, let me read this one. PG, Aries, and he's saying it like this. Africa, oh, uh, uh, Aries, 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 Africa. Hey, guys, Aries, Aries, Aries. That question you asked Andy about Africa was something I'd expect to hear from another white person. You need to really do your research before speaking on certain subjects. Like you've said before, you do not have knowledge on certain topics. You spoke like someone stuck in the early 80s. Africa has the power right now. If you're paying attention, you would know that they work as a unit right now. They are working with China because the U.S. just talks nonsense and wants to control who is in power. While China, on the other hand, uh, just wants resources, and in return, they help build roads, buildings, etc. 
People used to think China was controlling them, but if you pay attention, most of the African countries make these deals last for a limited amount of years. They are making deals that benefit them now. Ghana stopped selling coca uh, to the U.S. companies, uh, Hershey's and Mars, because they were avoiding paying bonuses owed. Guess what? They got what they wanted at the end and re, uh, and re <clears throat> resumed or oh, resumed selling to them. You know why? Because Africa can shut down the world if they stop trading certain things. They also stopped selling to Switzerland. A lot of China's medicine comes from African plants and animals. Chocolate made from Switzerland comes from Africa. Gold and diamonds come from Africa. I could go on. Ghana <clears throat> and other countries in Africa are now being are now giving black people who live in America and other countries outside of Africa, citizenship. If you can bring businesses there, they will welcome you in. <clears throat> when you said black people, we are a special culture, I know you're talking about black Americans. When I hear a white person say something about black people, I, su I assume it is about black Americans, a.k.a. African Americans. Caribbean people and African people do not relate to 98% of the things you say about black people. You are the reason other races look at every black person the way they do because you always say black people. Just say African Americans or Southerners. I don't know what the fuck grits or chicken feet taste like, and I don't care to know, LOL. I have included pictures of Rwanda, one of the cleanest and safest places in the world, and Ethiopia, the fastest growing uh, economy globally. One thing about them is foreigners are not allowed to own land, so the wealth is staying with the Ethiopians for obvious reasons. Oh, for obvious reasons, you, uh, Ethiopia was never colonized. Con colonial, what the fuck? Colonized. Colonized. God damn it. Colonized, and they are making sure it stays that way. You mentioned Kenya, so I included a picture of one of their cities, Nairobi. Uh, this email was too long uh, for the show and too short to include more detail. Peace. Double A. Listen, man. I don't know why you're misinterpreting what I'm saying. I, and you're sending me these beautiful pictures. And I get it. Africa's powerful. Africa's beautiful. It's not the stereotype and the butt of the jokes that people often make. But what I'm saying is, I don't... I, and listen, as beautiful as this is, and I get it. I see it. The pictures, the industry, the power. I get all that. But what you're not understanding is I don't want to live in a place where there's only really one kind of people. I like diversity. I like American culture. I like black people, white people, Asians, Hispanics, you know, uh, women of different nationalities. I don't want to live in a place where the, where, where, the, where, the, where the people are predominantly not saying you won't find Asians in Africa or other races in Africa. I'm sure you may. But, the, but predominantly... Africa's filled with Africans. And not that I have anything against Africans. I love all people. But because I love all people, I want to be around all people. I want to be around other cultures. I want to be around other tastes and spices and foods and engulf all that. I like American television. I like American cinema. So what you want me to do? You take that as I'm saying... Oh, uh, you know, I don't want to fuck with Africa because it's just this poor, shitty uh, place full of poverty and strife and blah. I, great, great. The beautiful resources, power. We The world runs off Africa. I got all that. But I, I don't want to live in a place where it's, you know, no, no whites, blacks, no whites, Asians, Hispanics. I want to be around everybody. Well, there's a lot of whites in Africa. I know, but you know what I mean. Yeah, well, I, see, I, I, what I like what you're saying, though, because everything that we need for the future, right? all the all the battery, the, the things to support what we're doing now, battery, electrical, it's all coming from Africa. Everything's always spawned from Africa. It's, it's the reason why they call it the motherland. Well, it's given birth to everything. Considering that most European countries don't have resources, so they're always coming from Again, Africa. Africa taught Europeans how to bathe. So, you know, I get all that. But goddamn, nigga, you know, I like being able to go to San Francisco. I like being able to go to Chicago. I like being able to go to wherever in within the United States and feel like I'm in a different place. I've been to Africa twice. Beautiful, nice, yeah. Nah, B. 
no no desire to have like okay if you're gonna go travel though right now let's say you're just gonna go travel and you get to pick wherever you want to go you got three weeks off three weeks right best hotel whatever you're going best hotel where 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 are you going in the world in the world you said three weeks three weeks can I spend a week in each somewhere different yeah let's let's three three places uh I've never been to Asia. So I would like to go to Japan, um, Japan, Italy. Uh, I'm supposed to say Africa, right? Ah, you supposed, can say whatever you want. Say, you can say, say. what. You, I, I don't know. That's a tough one because I, I I definitely want to go to Italy because uh, I love Italian food and I want to taste see what Italy is like actually. From the from the teat, I want to taste the food from the teat. Uh, Not as much flavor. I heard that. Yeah, I heard people say Italian food in America is better than Italian food in Italy. It depends on what you want. It's more like the, 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 they're more conservative with the with the spices with the with what goes into right. it, but it's cleaner. Like, oh, we're gluttonous, so we. So I'm just saying that that's that's one of the things. Italy, I definitely want to check out Asia. Uh, I don't know about that third one. You know? I don't know. Because there's nothing... Like, Italy has always been screaming at me. I've always wanted to go to Asia. So Japan. Check out Japan. Um, where would you go? Still want to do some more time in, in Europe. Um... Oh, you know what? Spain. Spain, yeah. Barcelona. Yeah. Um, I would definitely have to check out something in Africa, though, dude. I, 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 I could not not go if I had uh, best if I had the best accommodations and the and the the speed with to get to those places. But I would go there. I'd go. I, I want to go. I want to understand the Israeli. Palestinian conflict, and they say, yeah, that you, yeah they say you understand it much better when you go there. Yeah, I want to be able to come back. Yeah, well, I, I hope that I get to come back. I'd go there. Uh, I don't know where in President Europe, Trump, Europe go. And I, if I, you want this nigger back, you must adhere to our demands. <laughs> uh, you know, the Arctic is opening up now, too. Because, the Arctic? Yeah, because the Arctic now, because there's more landmass coming available. And there's supposed to be a lot of really cool things out there. Would I don't you know. ever want to go somewhere like Iceland? Iceland, yes. Really? Iceland's nice. Greenland is the one that's cold. Okay. So Iceland, yeah. I, I, dude, if I could at this point in my life, if I could, if I had unlimited funds, I would just travel. I, I like, I love experiencing the cultures. But I, I, you know what? I really and I, I, sh I appreciate Anthony Bourdain more now. Than I ever have in my life because to experience it, I would like to experience it at that 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 root level where you're going into smaller towns and you're 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 getting to eat with people and really experiencing the culture, not from the the culture that has been advertised, but the the culture that's actually on the ground, the people that experience it. I would love to be able to go make dinner at someone's house and just and and, and enjoy. Uh, a, 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 you know, a few days with, with some people that are nice, welcome you into their home, make dinner, wine, just really get to see that that that, that unique uh, culture of every uh, Dude, population. Dude, I love going to New York and going to Spanish Harlem and, and you know, the bodegas, the, the merengue, the salsa music, the, the, that, that, that Latin, you know what I mean? Yeah. I like that. You know, I, that's I, what I'm saying. I don't want to live in a place where it's just one people. I want to go. I want to spend some more time in South America. Is where I'd like. I'd like to go. I'd like to really see that area. See, it's hard to say top three because it's not. It's more about what the opportunity is. I've never thought about it as like like my favorite place that I could ever go to. It's more about opportunity. What's available. But I like when we go to fucking Boston, man, and we perform it. What's that club with the bank vault in the green room? Oh, that's uh, that's Connecticut. That's in Connecticut. That's, uh, oh, that's Boston. Comedy, comedy Connection. Comedy Connect. Like, dude, the fucking Italians, man. Yeah, they, like that's my that's the house I grew up. Dude, what the I, fuck I, is she talking about? But that's fucking a, guy. Like that's I, that's just. But that's what you said. That's the greatest part about America. You can get, and it's, it's not the true culture, but you can get all these cultures from all around the world here in America. That is what it made America great. The problem with America is it doesn't want to embrace what made it great. 
It's fighting it. And now we talk about all these cultural appropriations. That's what America is, man. It is cultural appropriation. You threw it in, and we mixed it up. And to say that you know, to, to we're fighting what made us uh, th- for a small amount of time, what made us the possibility. I'm going to rephrase it. I like that. What made what gave us the possibility to be the greatest place? What because we we took everything, uh, everything from everywhere was brought here to be in a way that we could really. Uh, enjoy everyone, but we 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 done it. We we've gone in a different direction. Yeah. <clears throat> Chris and color. Five figures weekly. Hey Aries, just wanted to say these niggas gotta understand that even their favorite comedians aren't on the road consistently every week. Don't let the smoke and mirrors fool you. Also, making that much money, I know child support is tearing your ass up. Pause. LOL. See y'all when y'all come to the Bay. Chris, um, child support is treats me how I treat its mother. <laughs> That's the most honest thing you've ever I'm said on this you, podcast. Baby, I'm telling you, don't piss off the mob boss and you'll be all right. That's the most honest thing you've ever said. I mean, uh, you said a lot of honest things, yes. but that's probably the most honest way of saying it. I told you my my mouth is my greatest attribute and my worst <laughs> weapon. Uh, Danny Pill, heartbroken. Uh, heartbroken. Yo, what's up, a a Just listening to the podcast and found out that he writes, she was in Ohio on May 6th. I think he meant to say you. You said it was Columbus. I got excited was ready to come and see the show, but it's in Cleveland. Broken hearted was going to the show broken hearted was going to show up with my ball gag and kick you kick <laughs> you in nuts like you said, Aries. But next time you guys are close to Dayton, I will be seeing you. Okay. I don't know when we're in Dayton next. I don't see that on there. Dayton. What's Dayton? What, 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 what's Ohio. Oh, no, no, I know. Yeah, I'm just saying, what club in Dayton? Uh, it's a Funny Bone. I think it's Funny Bone. Uh, um, yeah. We ever been in Dayton? Yeah. I don't remember Dayton. Yeah. You remember were... Toledo, Cincinnati, Columbus, Cleveland? Comedy clubs in Dayton, Ohio. Is it Funny Bone? I don't know. I just put it in, but I think it's Funny Bone. I should have just put Funny Bone in. What came mm. up? I might have to do that now since my phone wants to take you. You always hour. choose the, the rough route. Yeah, I do. That's how I got uh, through it. Wayne Deshaw, <clears throat> my dream white queen. Hey, Aries and Andy, it's been a while since I last wrote in, but I felt compelled to email you as your most recent episode struck a chord with me. White women who act black. Nigga, that is a pet peeve of mine. Now, keep it real. I've definitely sipped from the white devil's nectar once or twice, but I quickly cleanse my palate with a cold glass of Kool-Aid afterwards. I don't understand black men who date white caricatures of black women. It makes zero sense. If I were to ever hold hands with a white woman in public, she would have to be pure white. I'm talking she can't have a single braid, cornrow, or gelled baby hairs. Her hair has to be as stringy as a bowl of spaghetti. (laughs) Uh, okay. Angel hair pasta. If you're gonna say a white woman's hair is a pasta, you gotta say angel hair because spaghetti's thick. <laughs> stringy white women hair is when you use stringy. The closest to that is angel hair. hair pasta. Um, <clears throat> doll hair. Look at the fuck a guy knows what he's talking about. This nigga knows his fucking pasta. I thought he was gonna say something about fried chicken. All right. Anyway, uh, I went. I want her to cook all my chicken as bland and as tasteless as possible so I can take her in and teach her how to season just like how white folks taught us how to read mm. no I don't believe <laughs> I don't believe that's true right English maybe forced us For, to, they're forced, forced to, yeah there forced you go. us how to read and that would have been more. That would have been stronger too if he was forced her to season that chicken. Right. Like, let me ask you something. As a white guy who knows food, that stereotype doesn't bother you. What? 
the white people don't season know how to season their food or they don't season food. See, none of it bothers me because when you say white people, that's such a generic term as if I said black people. But no, no, but that's the stereotype. The stereotype. That white people don't season food. Okay, but the reason I say it because there are white groups in society in our internationally white right. groups of people that don't season food. Irish don't season food. The food is very bland. English. Ah, that's because we're using a kick on our wife's asses before they get a chance to spice it up. The the the, the England didn't right. before uh, until uh, Indians showed up there and actually brought their food. No, it was horrible food. They had no flavor in their food. So yeah, there are white groups of people that don't have flavorful food. So it does. It, it makes you, me would laugh. Would you agree that black people tend to overseason? I won't say overseason. I, I I have had food. Listen, it also goes back to how things when you have to go to how things were prepared. Soul food in general has to be over has to be overseasoned because overseasoned has to be overseasoned. And what let me let me preface this how I say this. It's not overseasoned. Some people would think it was overseasoned. The pe- soul food was based on on food that white people didn't want to eat. People didn't eat catfish back then. Southerners ate catfish like South. Poor people ate catfish. Uh, the the what, what did you say? Chitlins. Right. White people weren't knocking down doors to get chitlins. You got better season chitlins because if you're going to eat, that better have a lot of extra to cover up the funk on on chitlins. Right. Uh, I told you that uh, Hispanic people, Mexican people, we we deep fry chitlins so that they're they're puffy and they have a different taste. People have to do different things to make certain foods work, and so I'm not going to say over season. I think that. Uh, so then, why why do we lead in high blood pressure? A lot of fried food. Okay. And that's southern cooking in general. A lot of fried food. A lot of fried food. Right. And chicken is best. Fried. I mean, chicken tastes the best fried. You like baked chicken? Yeah, I mean, I can I eat hate baked chicken. chicken. I hate baked chicken. Why? Because when you bake it, the skin starts to curl off the bone. This is more about your your just the texture and the look to you. Ugh. Baked chicken's fine. You got to season it though. You got to season up a lemon pepper. A baked lemon pepper chicken can be a good chicken. Mm. But you got to put the right things on the right food. I don't think you know. I just. When I was in it, when I did go to Italy, this when I was in Rome and I was eating the, the Italian food that you're talking about, it's very different. The, the taste is different. You, certain things they they highlight certain things. Like if, if the tomato's the star, they're not going to throw uh, so much more garlic on it like we do here because the tomato needs to be the star. Mm. <laughs> so it, there's just different styles of cooking. But white people, white certain white groups of people. Don't really season, and that that the the food the 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 protein is the star, and like red meat, uh, you grill red meat. Uh, I love flavored meat. I love smoked food. I, I I love barbecue, but a good piece of steak, if you put a little salt and pepper, that's almost too much because the steak will have the flavor. It can be the shining star. The meat can be the shining star. Right. So it, it just depends on what what you're looking for when you're cooking. All right, let me finish reading this guy. Um, and if she knows one member of the Wu Tang Clan, I'm canceling that bitch quicker than <laughs> Nino Brown. <laughs> I get so embarrassed when black men date the bottom of the pile white women. If you're gonna cross over to the pink team, uh, at least get a draft pick, not a D1 level Becky. Anyway, that was my dream white woman, but don't worry, sisters, you're always my first choice. Finally. The Dallas restaurant you ate at called The Ventures, who spelled cheesecake chess cake. I have a theory that the owner of that establishment is none other than Magic Johnson. They probably <laughs> spent the whole day. <laughs> you know, we need certain kind of dessert for the black people. You know what? Let's give them chess cake. <laughs> then I think we'd be a more successful establishment. And if we don't have trays, we wrap it in aluminum. Listen. That you're talking about one of the most successful yes. black men, entrepreneurs yes. in the world right I'm, now. I'm talking about the old magic. They probably spent the whole day trying to explain to him that he spelt it incorrectly, but he wasn't having none of it. <laughs> Staff, Mr. Johnson, it's spelled cheese, C-H-E-E-S-E, magic. Don't tell me how to spell. How many rings you have? Zero. <laughs> how many do I have? Five. Count them. 
one, two, four, five. That's success. <laughs> Staff. That's ten dollars. Ten dollar, a lot of money. Kind regards, Wayne. And that was Sweet Georgia Browns that had uh, yes, the, the chess cake. The chess cake. Uh, dude, that that's a funny email. Yeah. Uh, man. Uh, do, do I kind of understand his? What I understand what he's saying though about the women. Yeah, if you're gonna cross over, absolutely. If you're gonna cross over, but see, you know, from hanging out with me, I have some interesting tastes. Listen. But the, but your tastes are authentic black women. Yeah, not black women who come off white. Right. I because why would I want? Dude, so I understand I'm, I'm, what he's I'm, saying. I'm telling you, uh, black women naturally have sass. They naturally have. That's part of black female energy. Mm-hmm. What? That talk back. That you know. That's and listen. That's I've said on my on stage. That's sexy to me. I like that. I like that sass. I, it's a, it's like a spice to me, you know. I put Tabasco sauce on, on my fried shit on, on a lot of my food. I like kick, and black women have naturally have kick. When I white women that act black, it's like they put extras on it. But they go they do they too they go too hard, and and it makes me feel like I'm doing something I'm, I shouldn't be doing in the first place. It, it, it white women take that up to a level. Because they're trying to, 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 they're screaming, "I belong." I can't have a white woman check me and sound like a sister. It, 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 I, I, it just something about that don't sit right with me. It's uncomfortable, but to the point where he put it, like everybody should know the Wu Tang Wu Tang uh, clan members. I can't say shit today. <laughs> I'm taking vitamins to try to make my brain better, and right. it's not working at all. It's getting worse. Hey, Amen. Uh, yeah, but I, I, culturally, I think everybody is kind of like we're. It's blending, so it's going to be harder and harder to find a white woman that doesn't know black culture shit. Right, but I don't. But white shit is just like if I get into an argument with a black woman and I feel like she's putting too much pressure on me, and I turn my black shit up. All she's going to do is try to match my energy. There are times when I need to win. And if I get into an argument with a real white woman and turn my black shit up, she'll cry, and I can get out of it. <laughs> I'm saying, you got to get one of these. The white girls from like Detroit aren't like that. Mm. They 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 they're experienced. <laughs> they have they're they're a little grittier, right? Um, yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they're not gonna cry. Montana Max, uh, yo, sup A and A. I'm responding to episode 461, 461 format and question. I've heard Aries often speak on all speak on all the commas on his paycheck. That's fantastic. I'm super happy, super happy for you, G. However, you don't think for a second that the common man isn't successful because he's not in Hollywood. Hollywood isn't for everyone. There's bi- there's a billionaire somewhere in a corner crying and depressed. And in the other corner, there's a wino. Oh shit! Who doesn't need for anything but he a missed. bottle of wine and a pack of cools to be in paradise? Now, what I'm about to say next is going to get me kicked out of the family, but it must be said. So it's all good. It's not about how many commas are on your check. It's about your legacy. Your legacy will live on far after you and all your commas are gone. You know that to be true, or at least you did in the past. I remember watching you on a show on BET years back that you were on. They were giving uh, praise to Franklin Ajay for being a legendary comic. This is at a time when you were all over the tube. Pause. This is a time when you were on fire. You're bas- you basically said he wasn't nothing because he wasn't on TV since Car Wash. You didn't say he was broke. You didn't say his life wasn't good. You said he wasn't on the screen. I'm confused, my brother. Well, let me clear it up for you. Number one, I have admitted adamantly that I've done some shit I regret in my youth. You would have a conversation with the young Aries? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Um, again, man, not making excuses, but I'm telling you my, my story. Grew up poor, didn't have shit. Nobody in my family ever had shit. I'm the first motherfucker to come into real money, success, fame, in my 20s. Uh... I was an arrogant motherfucker, man. I was, I was, I was arrogant. I was airy. I'm an Aries. I'm an alpha male. I'm from New York. 
you encompass all that in, into the pot. Money, fame, uh, my zodiac, who I am, my where I'm from, and again, I was a sexy motherfucker, uh, handsome as fuck, slim, trim. I'm getting pussy at an alarming rate. <laughs> Yo, you couldn't tell me shit, dude. You couldn't tell me shit. So yeah, I did a lot of things I regret. I said a lot of things uh, I wish I could take back. Um, and if I, you listen, hats off to Franklin Ajay. Something that I didn't understand coming up early in comedy was like boxing styles make fights. Everybody's different. Some dudes are blue. Some dudes are, uh, you know, uh, clean. Some dudes do impressions. Some dudes are political. Some dudes are, uh, uh, what you call the motherfuckers, you have the puppets. Some dudes are tandems. This is different, it's different styles. And I just wasn't mature enough and smart enough to recognize uh, Franklin Ajay for his style and for who he was. That doesn't mean that he'll be my cup of tea comedically, but from a respect standpoint, game recognized game. Uh, so yeah, I, I, I uh, too much, too fast, and 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 I just didn't know how to handle it. And I didn't have a Mac Mittens. Um, I'm trying to do, and I'm trying to, you know, in duality, be Aries and Mac Mittens. Uh, so yeah, I regret that. Um, and as far as the the Listen, I know about the legacy. I'm talking about arguments I get into with guys who, and I shouldn't even be doing that, but I get into arguments with people on social media who, again, who like to use the words washed up. And it, I, and that's always funny and appalling to me because I go, well, wait a minute. Your measuring stick for, for my success is based on somebody else's success, which is far from attainable for you. Nigga, you ain't Jim Carrey. Nigga, you're not even me. I ain't, I ain't Jim Carrey, no. But I'm, I'm bigger than you. I'm, I'm better than you. So it's not like I'm looking at that situation, like how, you, how you're generalizing it, like, you know, oh, there's a billionaire. I'm not talking about everybody. I'm talking about individuals who I spar with uh, on social media. That's what I'm talking about. So you giving me an explanation about, hey, man, it's not about this. It's about your legacy and, you know, uh, there's billionaires and blah, blah, blah. I'm not talking about that. Yes, I'm low on the totem pole compared to who else is out there. I'm talking about this individual who's talking shit to me that I'm talking shit back to. That's all that is. You know, this conversation made me, when we are talking about the Foreman movie and you're talking about God, and it gives you a... Uh, a little bit of a burger, mm -hmm. and they all have to share the burger. This is what this is where uh, I should have said this in, in, at that time, but you made me realize something. Right, what we were having this conversation. Um, your past, like performing, getting that burger and just a piece of burger, is part of the layer of who he is as a person that made him realize why he needed to have those that the the kids, uh, the rec center, the youth center. Because those are the things that you get layered into you when you don't have anything to remind you when you have big success, as he had, why you have to stop and help out those people. Because without that, you just assume someone fucked up. That's why they don't have it. You need that. You need that. And this is where I talk about you a little bit sometimes. And I'll say, when you have that great success at that young age, it doesn't come with those layers that you need sometimes to humble yourself enough so that right. when someone right. asks you a question like was asked to you, you might talk down on someone else because you hadn't had the experience or the know-how or the understanding of how hard it is because it, it came quickly. And so sometimes when that gets missed, that's when the interpretation can go wrong. And I, and I, and I think that, you know, that's, I know we've talked about this before, not necessarily on the podcast, but I never understood when, uh, people in, in this, in your business, in your show business, uh, don't want their kids to be in it or, or, or are worried about their kids because when it happens quickly, when they don't see it for, uh, the, the other side of it and how difficult it is for someone who struggles for years and years and years, um, it's different. So you don't you don't you don't come with those layers. You didn't come with those layers. You had to develop those la layers later in life, and that's even more humbling because 
you have to go back on one, some of the things that you've had to say, you know, or that you have to take responsibility for things that you said that you don't agree with today. And uh, I think that's, uh, you know, that's a lesson within itself. But, I mean, that's also shows the character that someone can be when they can go back and say, yeah, I fucked up. Right. Um, I remember BT had this, uh, this show on where they would have what they considered four uh, veteran comedians judge up-and-coming comedians. And I remember on the panel, it was... Uh, Thea Vidal, me, uh, my girl from Living Single, um, the comedian. She's also in Living Color. I know who it is, and I can't remember. I forget you, her you name. You can't help. You can't ask me for right. Uh, but anyway, I think we were the three people on the panel, and they had these up and coming comedians, and they did a little three minute set. Um, and you know, one of the dudes didn't make me laugh at all. I didn't think it was funny. And Thea and the other chick, they gave them the feedback. And let me tell you, I, I, even though we'll, we'll sit here and go, it's subjective, you know, dude. Yes, and that's what sucks sometimes because technically that word, it's subjective, is almost like a get-out-of-jail-free card. But you know when you watch something, there's that a, wasn't funny. There's a skill level there, to there, it. Yeah, there, you know that wasn't funny. Now, again, because it's subjective... You could get out of that. But you know when you go, man, that shit wasn't funny. So dude did his set, and Thea and the other chick gave him the, the feedback. And I just simply honestly went, nah, yo. Nah, that wasn't it for me. I don't know if you, you got to lie. You got you to gotta lie. You got to, I don't know what the right word is, finesse. You got to do, you can't be boldly honest. Because if you are, you're a hater. You'd be a negative. People are turned off by you. And I didn't know enough to know, yo, you can't be bluntly honest like that, yo. And I was bluntly honest. You can't do that. Yeah, you know. But it's And I'm going to tell you, this is the struggle for me. That's why I, like a lot of America, loved Simon Cowell. Loved him because he was a breath of fresh air because of his honesty. Was he mean at times? Eh, that's up for the end of, for you to decide on your own. But sometimes he was comedically mean. But it but he was honest, and a lot of times when he was honest, you agreed. You agreed. You what? You what? You, you didn't go, man. He just being mean for the sake of it. No, nah, that dude stunk, and he told it to you. I I like that. I respect that. Yeah. Yeah, but but see, you can't do that, right? No, you can, but you have to. Well, Simon Cowell is a different situation. Uh, see, and that, I'm tired of being told that. No, no, no. I'm and gonna, that's what bothers me. No, I'm gonna When my manager has said to me, well, you're not Bill Burr. You're not Bill Maher. You're not Dave Chappelle. So you can't do that. That right there is what causes me to like, I, when, and, and, and again, maybe this is where I need a Mac Mittens or I need to show growth, but... Want, being told I can't is what makes me go, I'm about to argue with you, yo. Because <laughs> it, makes, it makes me feel like you're telling me I'm not good enough. I'm not as talented. I'm not as worthy. That don't sit right with me. Yeah, but that's not the same thing as what, what I was going to say. I'm going to say what you was going to say. His show was already on before, so they already had an idea of what that character was. And I'm not saying that he was a character necessarily maybe that is who he is but he had other people around him because there were supposed to be he was that was his character on the show he was the bad guy he was the executive who saw it and he could say that and then other people would pick up where what he did that was his position on the show that show that you were on how many how many episodes was it i don't remember so but there wasn't there wasn't like Aries is going to be the bad guy. This is going to be the good guy. There's there's ways to make that kind of stuff work out. There's a reason why someone might be that. This show I don't know that it had the time to cultivate that kind of sh that kind of personality and he had already cultivated it on the show that they were doing in I, I think they were doing it in, in London at that time mm -hmm. or you know so in Britain. So that was available already. What I'm saying is on that show you could be that and you don't and even 
he doesn't just go suck and then just you know uh, that's right. he you you say something like I don't think this is your he, and this is what he would say I don't think this is the business for you uh, and I think that's perfectly he once described the dude as looking like a spider monkey <laughs> did he look like a spider monkey yes so <laughs> yes so uh, <laughs> you know but but that that's the thing you you, you, you otherwise you you're, you're going to be known as the person that's crushing dreams and you know that was kind of his and he talked about it hey you know this is a rough business you know and if someone doesn't that, why am i going to waste this person's time letting them think that they have a shot at this <laughs> that he said that right so uh, I, I don't know, but, and then there is a difference between in comedy and music music. If someone can't sing on key, they're probably not going to be able to sing. Right. Right. <laughs> so if your joke structures off a little bit, or you don't have a good, you know, you, you, you could still, you know, this, 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 this false sense of security, like, dude, listen, so you, because you're on TV and because I'm supposed to dance this little dance of bullshit with you and, and, and tell you something that's not honest, and then you get sent out into the real comedy world and you go into Cleveland <laughs> and you perform in front of them niggas or you go to fucking Memphis at Chuckles, Chuckles in Memphis, and you face them niggas, you're going to get what's real. Yeah. That so so. What you want me to do? You want me to sugarcoat you but, on TV to, for your little feelings, or you want me to show you? Hey, this is what you're gonna face. Th that guy isn't going up at chuckles at that point in his career, but he will at some point. You could just say, "Hey, man, I I, I know what you're trying to do, but you got to get back to the gym because I'm gonna tell you right now. If you were my, if I was training you, I'd have to strip you all the way back down. That's not. I don't get the premise. I don't get this. You could you could break him down that way. You could do it that way. But if you just go, nah, man, <laughs> that doesn't even give you insight to what's wrong with me. That just gives you like, uh, this guy just didn't even want to deal with me. So that's that's the other part of it, though. And you gotta, you know, it's how you want to be perceived. I think is part of it. I, I don't know. I would have said if, if I saw someone that's really bad, I've seen people that are really bad. And I've said to them, hey, man, half of doing comedy is being able to have the balls to get up there and do it. But the other half is figuring out what you want to talk about, what you want to say, and then being funny about it. And you don't have that part yet. Right. So you got to go figure that out. I love this clip. There's a clip on The Breakfast Club, but it's a rapper. He's, you know, spitting his verse. I mean, he's spitting his verse, man. And, he, you know, he think he bringing the fire and when it's over Charlemagne the God goes nah man that wasn't it <laughs> well and listen man I <laughs> I can see nah, him doing that it ain't it, 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 it yo dude but I, I saw Little Dicky they tried to get him to, to freestyle on who's Little Dicky you don't know who Lil Dicky is? Uh -huh. Lil Dicky has a show on TV. He's doing commercials. He's this white Jewish dude that, that raps, but he can't rap, man. Some people say that I'm wrong, that he can't rap, but he does. He can't freestyle. He can't do that, and he tried to do it on there, and it, it, he even said, I, I don't do that. But he figured out his lane. He found a lane for himself. He's on TV. He's famous. That's Okay. That's the that's the that's the era we're in now. I don't make the rules, man. I'm just an old dude, dude. I'm older than you, and I'm on this trying to figure out my space. And I don't mean my space. My space uh, is gone, but my space in this. Yeah. That would be sad if you were still trying to figure out my space. M musicians, I think, still use my space. Really? Yeah. Ranfoots, uh, Snowfall. What up, Aries and Andy? Ranfoots in the building. Here to discuss Snowfall. It's one of the greatest shows ever. Honestly, I started watching the show because of you niggas. The ending is what really fucked me up. Franklin was broken and turned into a hype. What's fucked up is all of the people that helped and put on that he helped and put on couldn't help him in the end. Yeah. Louis turned into a piece of shit and she got greedy. Jerome wanted out and he died because of Louis' greed. When shit hit right, they cheered him. When it goes wrong, he got the blame. Leon was fucked up and confused. Nigga, nigga, you was out in the streets killing babies and slanging drugs. He goes to Africa and uh, think he's the most holiest nigga. Franklin came to this nigga for help in the end. The man he put on. He couldn't help him. Leon, all the money is drug money. He, you couldn't help Frank out. Uh, that's what was fucked up about it. Franklin, you didn't have to go out like that. If the tiger didn't break you, nigga, 
why would the money break you down? They threw Franklin's genius intelligence out the window in the closing moments. He could have drew up a scheme. He still had the properties. Damn, my niggas ran foots out. They had my nigga in the dirtiest of white beaters. Shake my head. Yeah, man. You uh, you preach it to the choir, brother. Nah, but there's a lot that's off in there. Yeah? Yeah, because Franklin's ego is the one that got him into the problem. Because even at the end, you said he had all the properties. He didn't. He sold those properties so he could keep the big property, the one that he wanted, the one that was going to give him the respect that made him the one that he wanted to be. And the reason she left him is because she saw him throw it. She goes, you, she even says, you just bankrupted us. You bankrupted us. When if he could have got out of that other deal, like she was, she proposed, get out of the other deal, and then you're going to have this small network of uh, of properties that you're going to own, and you can build up a nice life from that, and you can build you can build yourself into a millionaire. He didn't want that ego. Ego took Franklin down. The reason they wouldn't give him the money, the reason Leon didn't want to give him the money is because he was going to go back into the same situation he was in, and that wasn't any good. Leon, despite everything he is, and then you did say about killing babies, he wasn't trying to kill the little, the little girl. Right. That, that was, that was, that's what happened. Uh, he couldn't give it to him because Franklin would just go back to where he was before. When he came back, he offered to pay Frank uh, for Franklin's uh, taxes to get him back into home, to get him a come up so that he can get uh, his feet back on the ground and restart it and be productive and part of uh, part of life. But he, Franklin didn't want that. Franklin's ego wasn't going to let him do that again. This is an ego. Ego is our biggest. It's what we need to blossom, but it's what kills us when we let it take over ourselves. Mm. Yeah, I, uh, and a defense rest, Your Honor. That's that's, that's how I I took it. Uh, yes, you, I just I just hated to see the fall from grace. Uh, it, it, yeah, but you know, and every and every money makes everybody greedy. Everybody gets greedy with money because, especially, and this is what's funny about it. That I'm going to say this, and I'm going to be chastised from somebody for this. The drug business is a real business. I don't give a fuck what anybody says. You got to do real business things. It's just you have a gateway to do something that legal business doesn't allow you to do. But you have to, you have expenses, you have buys, you have everything else that a regular business has. <clears throat> so you have to have some intelligence to be able to run your drug business and be successful at it. That said, it's the greedy part where someone sees it because it is an illegal business and you're making this kind of money. And they said, well, there's no reason why I can't make that kind of money. <clears throat> and then they jump into that business and they try to take over your business. They, they, it doesn't work out. You, 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 it, it's it's because it's a drug business and everybody can get a hold of it. It's not like some ask Coca Cola if everybody else can make a cola. <laughs> you you know th- there's a business to the business. <clears throat> when did RC go out of business? I, RC's still in business. RC Cola? Yeah. They still have places that make RC Cola. Get the fuck out! Royal of here. Crown Cola. It's good cola. Yeah. I have not seen an RC Cola. Since the eighties, no, some uh, RC is still out there, as far as I understand. Yeah, really, RC Royal Crown Cola, but and Royal Crown Cola still has the distributor, I think, for Seven Up, and that's why Seven Up isn't big because it was under that. Uh, that's why Sprite is so big, uh, and then uh, Dr Pepper, I think, used to be under them, but I think Coca Cola got a hold of Dr Pepper. Really, because Dr Pepper, uh, Coca Cola used to have Mr Pib was their answer to Dr Pepper. Mm. Um. They call me Mr. Pibbs. Junebug Spade! The return of Junebug. What's up, fellas? Long time no speak. Haven't written into the pod for a while. But you know I've been tuned in. Uh, I'm 20 minutes into Snowfall recap, and I had to get my thoughts off on a few things. First off, I love the show. One or two seasons were meh. But for the most part, it's in my top five series of all time. The ending of the finale was very sad to see. I think it was perfect because anytime there's a movie or series with drug dealings, it ends in the typical form, either dead or in jail. Rarely do they show the in-between results, which is how Franklin's character turned out. He basically became what his father was when they first introduced him. He had it all, then lost it all, and became a bum. I think the show overall was phenomenal from acting, writing, characters, and story. My only beef was with the last season where uh, they time jumped and had the characters such as his wife pop out of nowhere. I damn near thought I missed a few episodes because it felt like I was in the middle of the season. I really think you should finish The Wire. 
I hold that show in high regard because it showed every aspect of a corrupt and rundown city. They tapped into the police failures. Uh, they tapped into the police involvement, economics, as well as education failures. There were many characters and story arcs in that show that all tied together. Power started off good for the first two seasons, but just got goofy and over the top after that. I looked at that show as pure entertainment. Turn your brain off and watch LOL. Sorry I fell off uh, from writing in, but I'm back up in this bitch. One of the OG fans, stay safe. June Bugs Wade. Uh, that's incidentally how the every racist sheriff's deputy sounded in all those black exploitation movies. Get them niggas! Sheriff, that's that boy. That's how they all sound. How did you, how did you, what, even the sheriff in, uh, uh, damn, now I'm not going to remember. Give me clues. Into the night. In the heat of the night? In the heat of the night. In the heat of the night. Uh, even that sheriff had that kind of tone. No, he didn't. He didn't? Nah. I thought he did. Not, not, not so high, not so yelling. Nah, he he chewed his gum. Virgil. (laughs) But he still had that sound, that voice. Not really. Okay. Not really. Uh, Lars Peterson. In your podcast on the 27th, you mentioned avocado ice cream. If you ask Bobby Patterson, then he'll tell you that Tom Brady likes that type of ice cream. Also, long-time listener checking in from Denmark regarding Lars. You got to understand something, kid. Tom fucking Brady loves avocados because before you cut them in half, what do they look like? Footballs. (laughs) So why wouldn't he like it, kid? Then when you cut it open, what color is it? It's green. It's all the money he makes. And then the root of it is the fucking pit, kid. That's like the fucking huddle. If you break it down, it's the perfect fucking analogy. <laughs> Bobby Patterson, by the way. I think he did say he ate avocado ice cream. Did he really? Yeah. So this dude wasn't just fucking around. No, I think he did say he, he, he because he's on that, he has to have everything healthy. Really? That's how he's maintained his, you know. His, his godlike fucking figure. Because when he came into the NFL, he looked, he had, he had a dad's body. And mm-hmm. then he became. There's no such thing as a dad's body on Tom Brady. It's just perfection that's not really perfected yet. The guy's fucking perfect, kid. Mind your tongue. It's fucking Tom fucking Brady you're talking about there. The best Anglo-Saxon, pure-breaded fucking cleft chin white man that's ever lived. <laughs> the guy's fucking urine is holy. It's like fucking holy water, kid. If I ever got baptized, I just want to be dunked in a bowl of Tom Brady's piss. <laughs> <laughs> Bobby, Bobby, Patty, and Patty. That's funny. That's funny. That's really funny. <laughs> That's good. All right. Uh, Darren Burke. <laughs> what a podcast. Good evening, Aries and Andy. You chew, motherfucker. You. LOL. I just wanted to share that when I was a kid, I watched the movie Casino. I would always get scared during the scene where Joe Pesci stabbed the guy in the neck. You hear that, Ace? Sound like a little girl? (laughs) Where's the fucking tough guy that told my friend to go shove that pen up his fucking ass? Especially when Pesci kicked him while saying, you hear that, little girl? What happened to the tough guy who told him getting turned into Tom Brady? What happened to the tough guy who told me to stick that pen up my ass? LOL. Now, Now that I'm adult, I love that scene. Do y'all have any particular movies, scenes that scared you as a kid? Dude, uh, The Wiz. The Wiz? The scene in the train station when the dude comes with them two things <laughs> and they start to grow. Man, that shit scared the shit out of me, nigga. <laughs> the garbage cans with the teeth. Dude, chasing the lion. That didn't seem just... Nah, yo. <laughs> That scared the shit out of me, man. Dude, there was a movie when I was a kid. I don't know the name of the movie, but it was... Uh, I, I don't even... Re- all I can tell you is this one scene. 
there's an old there's an old lady in like the grandma, and she's she's knitting the whole time. <laughs> and there's this whole family; they're being killed off one by one. And you go into the room, and the grandmother they say something to the grandmother, and the grandmother doesn't answer, and then they do the front shot, and the light hits it. Right. They took the two knitting needles and they put it through the grandma's neck in an X. Like, damn! Uh, you didn't see it happen. You just see her sitting there with the. Right. the and I freaked out. Really? I thought that, that that scared the shit out of me. And my dad smoked cigarettes and he wanted a pack of cigarettes and he wanted me to go outside into his car to go get the pack of cigarettes. Your dad sounds so much like my dad. <laughs> what did your dad smoke? Uh, Marbles. Uh, not red, though. I think he I think he did Marble 100s. My dad smoked Salem's, Salem's. menthols. Uh, no, what, Italian versus black. It's the same shit. <laughs> but the menthol isn't. Right. Okay. Is that Italians don't smoke menthol? No. I don't think so. He definitely did. My, right. No, and my and I know my grandfather smoked Paul Malls, reds. Mm. No filter. Really? Oof. Yeah. So anyway, he said, You gotta go get these cigarettes. And I said, No, Dad, I can't I, I can't oh, go. Oh, you didn't want to leave the I house. was so scared to go right. outside and it was dark outside. And I was like, No, I, I don't want to go. It was late. It was late. Yeah. It was like eleven it was after eleven o'clock at night. It was right. one of those it was like a Friday night where we're allowed to stay up and watch the scary late right. movie. And I go, No, Dad, I can't go I can't do it, man. I don't I, I can't do it, Dad. I don't want to go. No, Dad, please. And he goes, No, you gotta go. And then then when I didn't want to do it because I was scared. I was definitely, he was going to make me do it. And he goes, I, you have a choice. You get a spanking or you could go out there and get those cigarettes. Full oh, school parents fought. And I said to him, I go, <laughs> I said, if I get the spanking, do I still have to get the cigarettes? Jeez. And he said, yes. Damn. So I had to go figure out how to fucking go get the cigarettes. And I went hilarious. out there. And I sang the whole you time. sang? Loud. Like I sang outside. What was that going to do? So everybody would hear that I was alive. <laughs> and if the singing stopped, they knew that I was dead. <laughs> so Get the fuck out of here. I swear to you. That was what was going on in my head. Where were you living at that time? In Tucson. Yeah, by the you, Air Force if, Base. If you'd have lived in uh, New York and did that, they'd have told you, shut the, the fuck, fuck up. up. <laughs> I was singing the whole time. Um, <clears throat> You know, that scene in Casino... Uh, Wait, where is he say? Yeah, that you hear that ace? You hear that little girl? What happened? All right, this is uh, this is Jeff Goldblum. <laughs> uh, take one. Beep. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, do you hear that ace? Uh, do you hear that? What happened <laughs> to that little girl? That, that what happened to the tough guy? I told my friend, uh, stick this pen up your ass. <laughs> I would love to see him play that old mobster character like that. Yeah. I think they, they should use him like that. Uh, uh, you, you, you Jew, motherfuck you. <laughs> Don't ever go over my head again. Uh, Keanu Reeves. Whoa. You hear that, Ace? That little girl <laughs> that told my friend to just pep his ass. Where is he? Yeah. He's down there with the cans. <laughs> just cans. Bill Cosby. You know, you hear that? I swear this is a little girl that told my friends to bend up his ass. Where is it now? Don't you ever go over my head again, you do, motherfuck you. Fuck, you hear that ish? What's the fucking little girl? The guy that told me to check the bed up his fucking ish. Where is he now? Don't you ever go over my head again, you do, motherfuck you. Yeah, it does work with it, but I think that they are onto something with that Jeff Goldblum. I'm telling you, man. I think the more I do it, you know. Yeah. Right. I remember like that, it. Remember the scene in Casino, that famous scene where Pacino threatened. I'm not Pacino. Uh, Pesci threatens the banker. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, I think you ought to know something about me. Uh, right when you'll be getting out of your coma, uh, I'm gonna come and I'm gonna bash your head in again. That's <laughs> Who I am, that's what I do. <laughs> oh, I think it's great, man. All right, that's, uh, give out some dates. Give it some dates. Guys, uh, you're listening to this. Uh, like We're on a little, We're going to be on a little hiatus. Oh, I, I didn't use that word. I got to use a hiatus. I'm still waiting for you to use patois. Again. <laughs> the, the patois? The patois. Uh, Helium Portland, May 25th through the 28th, uh, followed by Cobb's Comedy uh, Club. Oh, uh, oh. <laughs> Sorry, dude. I'm stretching. 
<laughs> I thought that that was going to be part of your new San Francisco sale. <laughs> oh, my <no>. God. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Brutal! <laughs> oh. Come. I just picture a bearded, <laughs> hairy chested, bearded man getting rammed in the ass. <laughs> oh. oh, the timing. The timing. Oh. Cobb's Comedy uh, Club in San Francisco. Why We're going to be put there that in my head? June 1st through the 3rd. And then we're going to be at the Pittsburgh Improv. Uh, Friday the oh. ni- <laughs> Friday <laughs> June 9th through uh, Sunday the 11th at the Pittsburgh Improv, followed by the DC Comedy Loft June 15th through the 18th, and then we're back, guys. We're back in Tempe, Arizona. The boys are back in town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The boys are back, and ain't no fooling around. June 23rd through the 25th, we'll be at the Tempe Improv, which is a break from going over downtown Phoenix. We're going to be at Tempe. Come check us out in Tempe, guys. And Romans. Yeah, they probably wouldn't let your tight white ass in. <laughs> you got any music? Oh, no. That's it, guys. Thanks. Wait. Sam Francis. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Spears and Thanks for listening to the Spears and Steinberg podcast. If you'd like to know who's responsible for this shit, it was hosted by Ari Spears and Andy Steinberg, produced by Steve Merrick and Anthony Holmes, executive producer Big Papa, Robert Kelly, and Matt Klein Schmidt for the Laugh Button Podcast. For more information on where to find us on the internet, visit SpearsbergPod.com.